Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about Praying Mantis. This here is my Praying Mantis. One thing I like about Praying Mantis is it is so different from other predatory um, insects and arachnids that I've kept, like say tarantulas and scorpions and centipedes. They're just so different. For starters, they're very movement based. They actually have really good eyesight for detecting movement. But the reason Promanus are great pets as well is they're not too difficult to take care of and they're kind of fun to watch as well. So there are many different types of Promantis. Um, they can range in appearance from ones like this one here which have that kind of typical mantis look to ones that look very extravagant. So this usually depends on where the mantis is from and what sort of habitat that it lives in. Um, for example, if it's a mantis living in, say, long, tall grass, it may resemble grass or twigs. If it's a mantis that lives on leaves, it may have a more leaf-shaped body. There are other types of mantis, like, say, orchid mantis, which actually look like flowers, and they live on and around flowers. So basically, the way a mantis will hunt is they're an ambush predator. They'll just sit and wait for something to walk past, and then they'll grab it and eat it. You might notice right now, my mantis is actually cleaning his um, little arms there. Um, mantis like to keep themselves very clean. They'll often groom themselves, which is kind of kind of funny to watch, actually. They look kind of cute when they do it. Um, kind of reminds me of a cat grooming itself a little bit. I don't know if my camera can pick up on it, but he is actually grooming his little front legs there. And um, those, fr those modified front legs are basically the tools they use to kill their prey. So they are an insect. Being an insect, they have six legs, but the two front legs have actually um, been modified into these like grasping type of arms with little spikes in them. So they'll use those to grab a hold of their prey. Manises also have extremely good eyesight, especially for spotting movement. You'll notice they're very responsive to movement. And they can actually swivel their head around as well, which kind of gives them a bit of a character as well. Like when they see something interesting move, they'll actually swivel their head to look at it. So as you can see right now, manises are, are also a great insect for handling. That being said, they're still an insect. They don't enjoy being handled, but if you want something that occasionally you can um, pick up and kind of interact with a little bit, a manis is a great choice. They're just quite happy to sit on your hand like this. They might move around a bit from time to time. They can jump as well, so just be aware of that. Um, and they're not really dangerous to you in any way. I mean, some people are kind of worried that they might bite them or something. Some people are worried that a manis might bite you, but I mean, realistically, their mouth is absolutely tiny. And I've never had a mantis bite me ever. I mean, even if it did, it wouldn't really hurt that much. They've got a very small mouth. It's like a tiny little pair of scissors, I guess you'd say. Because um, they do have very sharp mouth parts for cutting through their insect prey, but that's usually all they use it for. The worst a mantis could do to you is if it might, it might give you a bit of a pinch with its little forearms. And if it's a bigger variety of mantis, it might break the skin slightly, but generally it doesn't really hurt. And I mean, mantis are very... Um, Manis are actually very intelligent as far as an insect goes. They're very good at sizing up another animal and deciding whether or not to actually engage with it. So this goes for them eating their prey as well. Usually if you put in a prey item that might be a bit too big for your manis to manage, it generally won't even bother. Um, same as like if you were to annoy it with your fingers and stuff and it was getting all agitated. Usually they won't actually do anything. I mean, they usually are very good at sizing up whether something's too big for them to handle. So my mantis here is actually a female, and the females do live much longer than the males. Saying that, they're generally not a long-lived insect regardless, which is kind of their only downside. They just don't live very long, which is kind of sad because they are a very pretty looking insect. They sit out and display quite well. They do have a bit of character because they're so movement orientated and they can see what you're doing. Like, you can be looking at them and they'll be looking right back at you sort of thing and they'll move their head when you move so they're kind of cool um, and they're great handling insects you know they're quite happy to sit on your hand like this or they'll jump from hand to hand or whatever um, so it's kind of sad they don't live very long generally female mantis usually live between eight months to a year if it's a smaller species of mantis that only gets maybe an inch or so long they might only live four to six months 
Usually the larger species like this one, and there's lots of others that are even bigger than this, do live up to eight months to a year. With male and female mantis, they also look very different from one another. The females are like this one, they've got a fairly fat abdomen, and also the, agment, the abdomen has less segments than the male. So on a male mantis, the abdomen is, for starters, much skinnier and slimmer, while the females is much fatter, but also the male mantis has an eight-segmented abdomen, while the female only has a six-segmented abdomen. That's one way to tell. The other way is the male, on top of being much slimmer, usually has wings that are much longer than its actual abdomen, because males can fly, females can't. Reason for that, the males are the ones that are going out looking for the females, Therefore, they need the ability to get around and find them so they can fly. Females kind of just sit around waiting for males to come to them. Mantis are also cannibalistic, so you cannot house more than one mantis in a single enclosure. Uh, even when mating, the female mantis will, halfway through mating, usually turn around and bite the male's head off and, and eat him. So, um, they're just a big no-no with mixing them together. They have to be on their own. So feeding a mantis is pretty straightforward. They have to eat live prey because their eyesight's very movement based. If their prey isn't moving, they're not gonna notice it. Uh, they can be fed a wide array of feeders in captivity. So like wood roaches, duvet roaches, crickets, silkworms, mealworms. Uh, they're, they're pretty good with taking most things. You don't wanna overfeed them and you don't wanna give them prey that's too big. In the wild, mantis have been known to take down quite large animals, but I mean, it's kind of a waste of a feeder animal because they're not gonna eat the whole thing. And on top of that, you do risk the feeder animal potentially fighting back and injuring your mantis. So I prefer to just give them stuff that's a little bit on the smaller side. So for this mantis here, I might give it like a medium to a large cricket, and that's about it. The cricket has no hope of fighting back to something this size, uh, and it's more than enough of a meal for my mantis for at least a week. Um, I only feed the mantis I only feed this mantis once a week, but it can vary depending on the size of the mantis you have. So, generally you can go by looking at their abdomen. If their abdomen's looking a bit skinny, you can give them something to eat and it'll kind of plump up after they've eaten. And once you see it starting to deflate a little bit, you can give them another little feed. You don't want to overfeed them, because mantis will just eat and eat and eat until they basically make themselves sick and potentially even cause health issues for them or shorten their life. So it's better to keep them a little bit lean throughout the week. So the care for a mantis is very simple. Maybe a little bit more complicated and difficult than say a desert scorpion or a tarantula. They're, they're a little bit more sensitive, but they're still an easy insect to care for if you've been keeping insects for a little while at least. So when it comes to deciding what sort of enclosure you're gonna put your mantis in, there is a few things to take into consideration, and that is the size. There is a way to work out what is the bare minimum size for a mantis, and that is going off the mantis's actual body length you want the length of the enclosure to be twice the length of the mantis's body and three times the height of, again, the length of the mantis. And the reason for this is basically because when mantises do eventually molt, they like to hang upside down to, to do that. And usually they're gonna do it on the lid. Mantises generally like to hang on the lid. I'll put in a branch or so for the mantis, but they only sometimes use it. But when it comes to molting, they always seem to go to the lid. They'll hang upside down off the lid and actually fall down out of their old skin onto the ground where they have a soft, um, their exoskeleton is quite soft and for about a day or so then it hardens up and then they're like they always were. But that process can be quite dangerous for a mantis if the enclosure isn't tall enough because when they fall down, if your enclosure is too short and they fall and they hit the bottom of the enclosure before they've completely fallen out of their old skin, they get stuck like that and the old skin dries on them and they end up potentially losing limbs or even dying. So that is the number one way to kill a mantis when you set up a tank that doesn't allow them to molt properly. So this is my little enclosure here. I've actually used one of these jars. So I found a lot of mantis keepers um, do actually keep them in these over tanks. That's fine, I mean you can keep them in a critter keeper or a little glass, like aquarium, like something that's like a square or a rectangle shape, provided it's tall enough, that's still fine to keep a mantis in. Um, I've just got this jar because most people who kind of really get into mantis keeping seem to use these over tanks. They're really good at retaining humidity, I have drilled holes in the lid, so there is some air ventilation. 
Um, I've just got coconut fiber as a substrate, which again, it does hold a little bit of moisture and it releases a bit of humidity with evaporation and stuff. I've got a branch in there for him to climb on. He's not in here at the moment. <laughs> I had him out for the video and he's just sitting out kind of behind the camera right now while I'm talking about this. But um, yeah, so I just got a little branch in here. These holes in the lid also give him something to grip onto because he'll put his feet on these holes and hang onto them. So yeah, otherwise you can actually silicon some fly screen to the inside of the lid so they have something to hang on to. Um, but yeah, that's basically the setup for a mantis. Very simple. Give it a mist every other day just to keep that humidity up because again, high humidity helps them with molting as well. If you keep the mantis in an enclosure where there is not enough humidity, again, they'll have issues molting which can potentially lead them to losing limbs or dying. And for those reasons right there, that's why I think if you want a really cool little insect pet, get a mantis. If you can get a hold of one, get one. There's many different varieties, some of which are much easier than others to care for, so just look into what type you want to get, because some are actually quite difficult to care for, but there's also a lot that are quite easy as well, and just have the basic requirements. Basically everything I've just talked about is all they need, but again, that's just for the easier ones. There are some more difficult ones out there. One other little thing guys before I go, and I'm going to wrap this up quick because it is hot as balls in this reptile room now because we're in our summer and I'm sweating so bad. I have a new addition to the collection. So I got this, oops, he's awake now. I got this little diamond python as well. Um, and yes, he's not quite used to handling very much yet. He'll get there though, he'll get better. Um, so yeah, just thought I'd update you guys on that. I got another little diamond python as well. Now that's three diamond pythons I have now, and the reason I really like having this guy in my collection is because I don't have this type yet. I've got a rosette diamond, which is my big diamond. My other little hatchling is a high yellow diamond, which basically, for those of you who don't know, they do eventually get yellow spotting on their body as they grow a little bigger. This one is basically your wild variety of diamond. Um, it's just got the natural coloration. This is just the sort of colored diamond you'd see out in the wild. So I thought that was kind of cool. Uh, I got kind of all three types now. There's probably other types available, I suppose, but I'm happy with the three I've got. <laughs> I've always liked the natural wild types as well. Just up until now, I've never had one. So yeah, this is pretty much what you'd find out in the wild. So this one's only a young one. Um, a little bit older than my hatchling. My high yellow hatchling is a tad bigger, only slightly though. Don't know what sex it is yet. I'm gonna wait until it's a bit bigger before I probe sex it. Um, yeah, just thought I'd update you guys on that and I'll keep you updated with its progress as things go on. And yeah, he wants to get back into his um, enclosure right now. He's kind of stressing. He has not been handled much, so yeah, I gotta get him used to that. He's in quarantine at the moment. I don't actually have him in my uh, reptile room. I mean, I'm in the reptile room with him now because this is where I film. But I've actually got him living in another room in my unit right now in quarantine just because he's a new snake. I want to keep him quarantined for at least a month or two. Uh, get him dewormed just in case he's got anything like that, any internal parasites. Just get him eating and fat and healthy, make sure he's parasite free and he's settled well. And then I'll set him up something in here. Anyways guys, I'm out of here because I am sweating my ass off sitting in this room right now. If you enjoyed this video, leave us a like. Don't forget to comment down below with anything you want to know about manises in case I've left something out or you have another question. I'm happy to answer them for you down in the comments. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.